plague or like it was like random weird questions and they'd have to just be like oh what is this? Like, Welcome to 42, Two Souls, One Journey, a raw and unedited look into our lives as humans. Based on the 21 grams experiment by Dr. Duncan McDougall, who concluded that the human soul weighs 21 grams. On this podcast, we will explore that no matter what our lives look like on paper, our souls journey similarly. Oh my God. On this episode, we are speaking with the healing artist, all things metaphysical. She has a dynamic set of access consciousness tools. We'll talk more about what that means. The host of The Pleasure Zone, where topics about energy sex are, and sex are discussed. Sensual movement artist, relationship and sex alchemist, Militia Jelenic. Did I get that right? Pretty close. Yeah, ah! Militia Jelenic, but I like it. It's really close. Well, I've been calling you Malika forever. I mean, I know, I've... but I like that too. Okay. Because <laughs> that means princess, right? So I'm like, I like that you and your friends all call me Malika. So that's fun. Well, our, okay, our okay. common friend, Salima Bimani, who, yeah. is, who everybody deems my witchy friend, who, because she'll always come in, save the place, move energies, uh, kept calling you Malika. So I was like, oh, Malika, Malika. And then I heard your podcast and I was like, wait, this is so much cooler or just always cool. called me Malika. I know. Yes. The, yeah. And I've even corrected her, but I still have that name and I'm cool with it. I'm like, hey, you call me whatever makes you happy. So that's good. <laughs> he said, so Melissa, no. M- M- Militza. Militza. There, there you go. Beautiful. You go. Yeah, yeah, no, I love it. I think it's beautiful. It's such a, it's got a beautiful ring to it. Militza. Yeah, so- yeah, it's like pizza, Melitza. Like that's kind of an anglicized version. That's usually how I get people to. So where does so let's, let's you know where does the name come from? Tell me more about your origins. So um, my name origins come from my uh, the country where my dad was born, which is part of the former Yugoslavia, so called Serbia. Okay. And uh, I was actually named after my grandmother. So the name kind of loosely translates to like sweetie or dear face or something like that, like sweetie pie, deary, deary girl, okay. you know, that kind of hmm. thing. <laughs> Which I feel like at the core of the essence, that makes sense with you. Like if someone looks at you, they'll be like, oh, dear girl. Like, yeah, yeah. I think it's cute. <laughs> um, I was recently in Croatia, which is close to Serbia. And I remember seeing wow. like the modern museum there had Serbian artists and for a country that just came out of war, like not too long ago, it's, amazing the power that that country like the people of that country hold I feel like energetically I walked in the museum and, and I saw some of the pieces and I was like whoa like my mind my body was shaking my like oh my I'm still I got goosebumps just thinking about them again but it's it's so rooted in energy and movement mm-hmm. and it for me it doesn't make it doesn't shock me that that's where you that's where your ancestry comes from <laughs> this, I was like I wait. think that's cool it's- what actually had you, I'm going to interview you back, but what had you, like, what had you go, oh, I think Croatia sounds like a great place to travel to. A really good friend of mine uh, and business partner, uh, Caroline, started a women, a Croatian women's network out in Croatia. Oh. Again, a forced to be reckoned with as well. And I was a designer. And so I was shadowing underneath her. And I thought, if I'm creating the work for that, I want to come and sort of see what it's all about. Uh, so it's on International Women's Day. Uh, and nice. it's in Croatia and it acknowledges these phenomenal women from the Croatian diaspora about the work they've done. So that's what took me there. But while I was there, you know, on my free time, I was like, okay, I'm going to, like, I always want to explore um, modern art. That's my, like, I love, the MoMA is one of my favorite places. Any place that has modern art, I want to know mm. what is happening currently in our, in the space with people who are talking about art and what are they creating? Because I feel like that is it's more exciting. Like the old Renaissance, they're dead, they're dead. They, they had their time, they had their peace, but what is happening right now? What are our people saying at this time in the moment? So that's what took me there. Um, <laughs> okay, so back to you. Well, I think that's an interesting comment because when you think about that, like all art at its time, even when you think about the Renaissance, it was all modern at the time and people were fascinated by how modern it is. They weren't really, I mean, sometimes they look back at classical things for like structure and composition, but but a lot of it was modern for its time, even like the way lighting was used and things. So 
it is it is kind of cool to always look at the modern because it's going to give us a glimpse into like where the future is going to a lot of the time right. artists are showing us like where are we headed right so i think that's cool I, but i think also it's all rooted in classic right like i think like so i think of contemporary dance basis ballet like everything like you sort of have to know your foundation of what the art mm -hmm. was and what it is like in order for you to break all the rules and do di different things um so i think that's you know you're right in the time they were modern, but they always still, everyone still feels like it all comes back to like Michelangelo and the classic, the classics, because once you understand them, then you can break all the rules, which is, I, I guess I like the rule breaking. <laughs> it's hard, right? it's hard. <laughs> but I think knowing your, like knowing your history and knowing where, where it comes from so that you're honoring the breaking, does that, or you're honoring what you're, yeah, yeah, I don't know if that, yeah. Um, <laughs> I love how this interview is like, <laughs> like around it's me. just like going everywhere, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, so you know, the reason I reached out to you was that, you know, one of the things you had said to me in a conversation we had had, so you had said in my inbox for since 2017, and it just sat there and your name sat there, your address sat there, and I never reached out to you. And then one t earlier this year, no, my God, earlier last, later last year, my body called out for you and it it's never happened to me in my life where it's been like, something's happening, you don't understand it, call this person. <laughs> and- Person you never met. <laughs> never met, recommended by somebody. And it sat, but it sat in my Google inbox for over three years, waiting, I guess just waiting. I, I don't know what the right word is for, it was just sat there. Um, and you were 129 million bazillion percent the right person for me to reach out to. Because the moment we talked, I was like, oh, yeah, like, there was a clearing, there was a sense that there was so much that happened in that conversation um, that it, it, it sort of all the, all the, everything aligned. And I was like, oh, perfect. Of course, I had to reach out at this time to this connection. Um, let's, can we, let's, can we let the people know what you do? So yeah. I mean, in my reading, I read Access Consciousness. Access Consciousness is what I read. Yeah, so... So that is something that you read in my bio, yeah. So that's yeah. just like a set of uh, things that I've learned, right? So that's like an umbrella group of work that I studied for a while. It's not really a group, of, it's actually consciousness. It's like looking at um, how to break free of judgment so that you're not thinking how right you are about something or how wrong you are about something, but it gives you kind of a broader spectrum of like the world and it gets you out of being kind of like really narrow into being able to see things more. And as, as you don't perceive things from a rightness or a wrongness, and you don't have that judgment floating around all the time, your awareness grows. And as your awareness grows, you can perceive more. And I was always interested in figuring out how to like perceive more in the universe. How do I like live beyond my senses that are rudimentary? Like how do I explore these like more higher heightened awarenesses and so uh, I was always curious probably I think some of the first books that I was drawn to reading were you know when I was like 11 or 12 years old were like out of body experience books like who does that at the age of 11 when Harry Potter wasn't around right like it was it was not that common so um, yeah I was a bit of an oddball always curious about everything that was greater than me um, and do you think like I was, for me, ancestral pass down is such a big thing. So, you know, when I think I'm here right now in my, in my mind, my body, this is happening, but I'm like, no, this didn't come cellularly. It doesn't feel like it came from me at all. Do you, so tell us about ancestrally. There's gotta be, and I say this with love, there's gotta be other witches in your family that like, Oh, long line of witches. Yeah. yeah. Okay, <laughs> good. Line of witches. So actually there's a joke here. Like uh, there's a running joke using even with that uh, within my current like close knit family. So in the area that we live in, my mom lives in a little town near us called El Dorado. And for a while we lived with her, uh, my daughter and I, when my daughter was first born and people would refer to us as the three witches of El Dorado, which sounded like a great title of book. Yes. And I'm like, oh yeah, it's so three generations of the three witches of El Dorado. Um, kind of took like, yeah, we are the three witches of El Dorado, but it goes back like generationally that I'm aware of at least four or five generations of people who not only did like psychic readings, I had on my, um, on my father's side on the, that more um, 
Eastern European side, I had like a grandmother who was a herbalist, a grandfather who was a like kind of a they kind of referred to him as kind of like a town prophet he wasn't like a psychic but he prophesized things about the future uh, so he got his family out of a lot of his family out of the um the area before the war happened he knew he was like in 10 years this country's going to go to crap and that was in the 70s he knew there was going to be a fall of communism he he kind of like had this foretelling of things and was like warning people so he was an interesting character and on my my mom's uh, side, there are like both sides from her generations. They all there were like crystal ball readers, tarot readers, tea readers, you name it. It was just like common. And so growing up in a household where being able to read energies or things like that was just common. We would have Chinese food, and then we would have uh, read tea leaves from our Chinese tea. And I thought everybody did that honestly until I was like seventeen. I did not know that you didn't just sit down at your home, have Chinese food whenever you had it twice a week. Cause my mom <laughs> went to college and hung out with people from Hong Kong. So her roommates were all from Hong Kong. And so we ate a lot of Chinese food. I just thought this is a normal thing to do, but none of my other friends did this. I didn't know that though. So yeah, we read tea leaves all the freaking time and coffee cups. I just thought that was normal. So we, my, my dad's side, his friends we would go to their house and they had Turkish coffee cups and we would just go and you would just drink it and read it because that's what you do. And that's how you have conversations as you do psychic readings with people because that's just how you are. So yeah, it's yeah. a weird life, right? But I didn't know that was a weird life. I thought that's how everybody were like, just, you know, people go have water together and then they read whatever you have your coffee and you go read your futures, you know, I just thought that was normal. I mean, can we wish for a world like that? That sounds amazing. I wish I could have, like, <laughs> for me, the only place we could go was with Salima's house, where she would do Turkish cup readings, or she would come over and make make them happen at our house, but mm. nobody else did that. That's like, like, that would be such a wonderful space. Like, for seven, if, if that was where I part of my youth, that'd be amazing. I would have probably eaten more Chinese food. Yeah, if it meant we ate it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we ate it a lot, too, but our family never did the readings, so. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. What, I mean, for the next generation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we now you know, there's a new tradition. You can take that. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> um, and every time you're having Middle Eastern food, have your Turkish coffee and do those Turkish uh, cup readings too. So, and those are so delicious. And I mean, you know, while I was in Croatia, I learned about the, mm. um, how the Turks came and took over that part of Eastern European. So yeah. there's so much about the food that's like, uh, very Turkish and flavored in Turkish flavor, yeah. but mm, oh my god, I miss so the good. food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So in this episode specifically, I wanted to talk about like I wanted to explore like when I thought of you, I wanted to explore sex, uh, desire, drugs. Oh, thank you, darling. The shame around. Yeah, I mean the I shame think around. You and I want it. to explore sex. Yes, I feel like I've accomplished something in my life. <laughs> well, so great. Well, <laughs> when I read about when I was watching when I was reading the pleasure zone when I was reading the pleasure zone. <clears throat> Let me do it again. When I was reading about the pleasure zone, it's the first thing that comes up is like, stop judging ourselves and our bodies. Let's have fun, joy. Um, yeah. Let's explore this thing. And I was like, wait, this is my soul. Well, my soul had to get ready to come meet your soul. But my soul was That's like, awesome. this is the right person. Like this person is already along this path. Like how, how, when, where, and why? Okay, let's start with how. How did you, how did you get there? How did... What yes. was that moment in life that, that said to you? I'm going to talk about sex because I want to. Yeah. And so it's just, and for me out there, we'll put the link for Pleasure Zone there. It is brilliantly how you do it. Like as a, you. yeah, as a male who wants to explore all different types of sex, like I think it was your, anyways, your top 10 list, but let's go back to you. <laughs> I, I wrote down your top 10 list. I was like, you my, oh, awesome. Here's some things that I I'm wanted to excited to hear what your top 10 list for me is. Um, so yeah, uh, the one way that has actually started that I ended up having a radio show podcast was that I was invited on to a friend of mine. Uh, she had a show on the same network where my show was produced on the Inspired Choices Network. At the time it was called A to Zen. And uh, she invited me on because I was having lunch with her and a friend of ours. And this woman was sitting across from me and she, uh, she was complaining about her issues of giving blowjobs. I'm like, girlfriend, I'm not sure how you're giving blowjobs if you're not having fun with this. And the girls, 
the lady who's sitting beside me, she's like, she, I could just feel her lean in and she's like, I want to hear what you have to say. I'm like, okay, so what are you doing exactly that you're, this is like, you're ending up in pain after, like, I don't even know how it's possible to end up in pain. She's like, well, my neck hurts and this happens. I'm like, mm. okay, well, we're going to have to look at some new positions and you need to be comfortable. And and apparently I just like gave this advice. Like it was like, to me, it's just like normal conversation. So I was just sharing this. And the woman who had this radio show, she's like, well, you come on my show and talk about blowjobs and sex. I'm like, yes, it's just like not hard for me to do that. But I didn't even, it's one of those things like those teacup readings. I didn't realize that my, um, my ease with it was something unusual. Right. I thought it was like, how, doesn't everybody have ease with this conversation? People won't just tell their mom about their sex life or because I don't identify my mother as my mother that way. I'm like, you're another human being who is a sexual being. Ooh. So I, and we don't usually think of our parents that way, do we? Not at, I'll say not a bit recently, not at all, but yeah, hundred percent. We don't think of them. They're our parents. They're they're just from an egg about us here. Stuff, They're not allowed to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've done their job. We were here. <laughs> yeah, we're here. Somebody had an orgasm. Probably not our mothers, but somebody did. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> so. <laughs> so. Right. Probably not our mothers. You're 100 percent right about that. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> High, highly unlikely. <laughs> but, oh, our poor mothers. But <laughs> so yeah, that conversation apparently that was kind of like what sparked the interest. And then the the person who was looking for more people to be on podcast um, approached me and said, "Would you ever consider like having your own show?" And I'm like. I don't know, what am I gonna talk about? Like I did my show about blowjobs. Like what else do I have to say? She's like, do you think you can come up with four topics? I'm like, yeah, I can probably come up with four topics. And honestly, I thought, oh, I'd have like six months of shows and I'd maybe have 24 topics I could talk about and then I'd be done. Um, so six years later and over 300 episodes later, I keep finding new topics and it blows my mind that there's so much out there. Um, not only that, like I've started to talk more and more about different specific like paraphilias because that's that's something that people are interested in. So that I find um, fascinating, like how many are out there and like what turns people on to the point of like even things like dusting and watching somebody dust can be highly erotic, which I think is awesome because oh. I've had requests for making videos of of uh, like dusting things like plants. So, like that just turns me on. I'm like, well, that's amazing. I love that. That's like that that could be erotic. I love that anything can be erotic. Yeah. And I do that for free anyway. Like, I feel like, right. put me in a costume, throw me up. I would have what he does for you in a jog strap or a speedo. Like, if that exactly. is going to create a joyful pleasure energy, why not? Right? Yeah. So now you're going to start making new videos, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, cool, oh, I can do this I and mean. I don't even have to get like deep and dirty and I don't have to like do cum shots on screen. What? I can do this. I can be a porn star. I mean, I am a stage kid and, you know, lights, makeup, camera, bring it all. <laughs> I think it doesn't take much. All of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I may have some costuming already ready for me to go. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Um, well, and so I love the way you speak like, when it seems so natural, you got into the talk and talking and then 300 episodes later, I feel like there's, like I've heard people talk about sex, but you talk about it like it is fun. You know, I recently had a partner who I'm exploring things with and we were, it, it's a new body for me to explore. And um, and I was, and I went and did all this research like, oh my God, what does the trans body look like? Blah, 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 blah. Mm. And oh, how it was like, Mm. just let's have fun yeah I was, I was like what I was like you know like being with men the end is like I know how to get you off you just like once you're come like you come I've done my job or I come I've done my job but a tra like a, a trans body is different and they were just like we don't need to come you will never get us there so let's just have fun with it and I'm okay with that and I was like oh done wow. like research brain shut down <laughs> Like I like I read everything I could. The internet told me what it needed to, and so did your like your podcast. I was like, here's a list of like here's my wish list of yes, no's, and maybe's. <laughs> 
And they shut it down. And I was like, okay, done. Like, I'm going to shut this down and we're just going to have fun. Yes. And it was such a, like, I feel like we forget that, right? Like when I talk to my sisters about, like my sisters and I have talked about sex and the one that's married um, who talks about this, oh my God, she's going to hear this. Oh, well, we're, we're putting it out there. Um, they talk about in, like in a sense of procreation, like even with my parents, mm-hmm. it's like we have sex because we have to procreate. That's right. You know, it's, it's not fun. Like, I don't think I've ever talked this about this. This is all that we do. And there we yeah. go. And have a nice day. Yeah. Dan, and, and then here's a baby. And now we have to raise that's a right. baby. Like, Nobody like, which is bizarre for me because as a gay man, I'm like, my key point is I want cost. I really do want costumes and like drama and like I want to. I I don't care about the rest. I want to make it fun, right? I'm like, so fun. How do we elongate the fun? And I feel like you're teaching the world that is that being the key important. Like that's being one of the key important factors. Um, In addition to understanding and knowing yourself, I feel like you know we were in a world of consent now. Mm-hmm. which we never were before and just like asking consent but also consent's forcing us to have a conversation with us, uh, each other and say what do you like what don't you like what's a yes what, what's a yes no and a maybe that yeah. i've been having sex for 40 40 oh my god for 20 years and that blew my mind say, i was like lucky you Boy, <laughs> you're too. sweet mary was that by choice <laughs> i don't know actually <laughs> that was a, definitely very actively since uh, for the last 20 years Yes, no, and maybe we're never even a thought in my mind. Wow. Like, how That's cool. Yeah. How does that, like, how do you come up with your topics? Is it, like, how do you, so fun, and how do you come up with? The... How do I come up with topics? So a lot of them are actually inspired by either clients, friends, people's lives, uh, requests. So I do get some requests. And um, my own life, it's sometimes it's like things like I'm like, what am I personally dealing with right now that I need to find a solution for? And I'll coach myself out of it. Uh, or I'll refer to some of Yeah, sometimes I'll coach myself out of it. Or I'll listen to um, sometimes I'll actually listen to things like coaching on parenting, or I'll listen to I, I listen to a variety of information, because I find that as much as we have these human bodies, we also have we can draw information from so many things like, like it's weird, but you could probably draw information about sex and procreation and fun and play from looking at nature, even Mm -hmm. like animals don't really judge sex. They just do it. And that's what it is. Right. There isn't a lot of drama trauma that goes on with it, which we create because of our human emotion involved. But I like, you know, if I like watching like, uh, like say bird documentaries. Like I watched one one day and I fell in love with this bird. He's like a bower bird. And my daughter laughed. She's like, you're in love with the bird. I'm like, I actually am in love with the bird, <laughs> but I don't want to have sex with the bird, but I'm in love with the bird. Um, and he's so handsome and he ha- he makes like a little bower house and he's so lovely and he- he's so adorable. And he then he like mimics all of these other animals uh, and he can mimic human beings voices to try and impress his mate. And I'm like, oh, look at him. He's delightful. He's trying so hard. <laughs> so I'm kind of impressed by him, his little dance he does. So yeah, I have a little crush on a bird. And so I get like inspiration from weird places. Yeah, it's a particular bird and he's a, it's a particular bower bird that I have like a thing for. Um, so it's quite funny. I don't even know what country he's from, but one day I'll meet him. So, so, so yeah, like when I say like I draw inspiration from many things, it's that. And also like I watched, um, I watch people and kids and um, my daughter for a while, her best friend was a tree. So I was fascinated by like, how do we have relationships with nature? And uh, one day she was about seven and she said, I want to marry a tree. I'm like, that's awesome. So I looked at like, can you legally marry trees? And there are women in Mexico who legally marry trees to protect them. And she's like, well, that's what I'm going to do. I'm like, well, there you go. But then recently she's like, well, I might change my mind. I'm like, well, you're not stuck with your choice, which is a beautiful thing. You don't have to be stuck with anything. And I don't think you even have to be stuck with an identity. Like I, I don't, I I don't, um, I don't know. Like people often ask me, like, how do you identify sexually? And I actually don't identify. It's more, and I don't even identify as pansexual. It's just like, you're a human being. Um, and it's you as a person like I don't have I don't really know and I guess I've never really understood that like I have a really weird perspective on humanity and people and bodies and um I think I just don't understand the division 
and I don't understand like polarity of like gender. Like I don't understand any of these things. Like to me, um, like transgender bodies or anybody who's going through transition, that kind of body makes more sense to me in my universe because it's like you have all parts that you might want to have. Yeah. And that just makes sense. I don't know. I, I feel like I 100%, 100% agree with you. There's something about like we, we're, it's almost like you, you're one of your grandfathers, but you're already projecting what the future is going to look like. You're an artist who's already created a world where I think we're, we're, as humans slowly trying to catch up to right just like binary bodies trans bodies like they're just bodies they were they were just vessels that these souls have been born into and we have somewhere been conditioned that a a must love b and anything outside of that is wrong or abnormal uh, but really like if it's a soul connecting like a soul connected with a soul or like your body's just points and like pleasure points and a talking point like it's 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 something that's just it's it's a, a vessel that's holding the rest of you mm -hmm. it shouldn't matter what it looks like or how it, like how it feels yes but it, it shouldn't matter what it looks like because at the end of the day we're all gonna we're, we all have the exact same set of feeling touching as long as we're open to experience them does that maybe? yeah i get what you're saying yeah I think it's the willingness to like explore. It's yeah. not that we even ever have to actually choose it. It's just the willingness to explore. And it's the, so people are always saying, well, I'm really open-minded. I'm like, so are you willing to blah, blah, blah. And they're like, no, I'm like, so <laughs> I'm not sure what your concept of open-minded is, but to me, open-minded is the willingness to literally be choosing and experiencing anything. Right anything at all and just sort of yeah the willingness now if you yeah. actually if you take that step and you engage in that activity that's even more willing like that's actually that's like taking it to the next step it's just the willingness so i think that's like a challenge i would put out to people is when they do think that they are like super open-minded is my challenge is like i throw a lot of things in their face to see if they are and then i'm like so i'm not saying you have to but are you willing to um, so I live in an area right now in Canada. I live in this little part of Ontario that's kind of Hickville. It's between Toronto and Ottawa. And it's a bit Hickville. And there's a lot of like, homo like homophobia, racism. There's a lot going on that is like challenging to live around, we could say. And so I have clients that come in that will say stuff really boldly, right? And they're just like, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, really? So you have an issue with your grandchild who is coming out of the closet. And did you like them last week? And they're like, well, yeah. I'm like, so how did the person change between last mm. week and when they came out of the closet? Oh, I'm like, really? Like, think about this. Do you want to lose this person in your life? Cause all of a sudden you don't like them. Like, where's your so-called open-mindedness? Like what? This is what they think open-minded is though, which blows my mind. Again, I think it's because we've been told this is a category and if you like, this is closed minded, this is open minded. And if you're sit, like, even if you're at the cusp of it, you are, you know, available. Yeah. I, you know, a lot of that, like, it sounds like it's fear. You know, when you, you say this, the things that you don't like, when you don't know something, you're scared of it. And it's the fear that I we honestly feel that people, that stops people from moving forward or exploring. What do you do when a client or when somebody like, Fear shows up regularly, and especially like we live in a world of fear, right? Like any politician or any political news talk, like news re reinforces fear, 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 fear as a way of controlling us or absolutely keeping us safe as they would like, to, like whatever their idea of safety is. What happens when fear shows up for a client or someone you're speaking to? What do you, especially like, yeah, well, how do you navigate that? Or what would you say to navigate that? It depends on, so some people have a fear that's based on a past experience where their body is going through a trauma and they're reliving something. So right. if they're like having a fear based on, say if they're having a fear of, of sex, for example, and they've had past traumas of being sexually violated, their body's been violated, then I'd say, okay, so you actually have a fear based on a past experience. Now, is that experience occurring right now in your life? Right. It's to kind of bring them to the reality point to see that, so some of those fears will create anxieties and will create like limitations, right? So it's, it depends on where they're coming from, but 
a lot of the fears are when when people have a fear that we would we could say is like founded in some kind of past experience reality i would just get them to acknowledge whether that's happening now or not and it's like hey is this actually occurring in your life because if it's not can we switch that and look at that's your past this is now and i had a a colleague once he described it so well he's like is the bear is the wild bear running at you right now it's like no actually i'm not being attacked by a wild bear can you breathe then oh crap i can i'm not actually being attacked right now <laughs> so i thought it was like he had, he had a really great take on how simplified um, things can get with fears is like, just check, stop, check and see, is it real? Is this fear founded in anything that's occurring right now? Because a lot of our fears are founded in things from the past or things that we are projecting into the future. And if we can just be present with right now, like to me, having this conversation with you, is there anything that I would need to be afraid of in this moment? zero but a lot of people have like even fear of being on video or being recorded because they're like there's an anxiety or performance anxiety but even when you're on stage and you've got this anxiety like the projections are usually into the future or from the past some kind of rejection some kind of future stuff right where you're going oh my god what if the reviews come in bad what if i get fired okay that's not happening right now take right. a breath stop where are you Oh, I'm right here. It's all it's all good, right? But we forget because we are such animals of curiosity that we'll just go to the past. We'll go to the future. We want to explore. So what do we do? We explore fear because that's our first right. thing. We'll explore fear because it's familiar. But we rarely explore hedonism and passion and like things that would excite us and like love because those are not they're not that uh, common, right? They're not things that we are really um, conditioned to to work with in a way that normalizes it so hedonism and and like pleasure are these things that like ever in your lifetime you were told go into your life explore and normalize that sensation for you mm -hmm. no it's like fear now normalize that know what fear is know what to try and avoid know what to be afraid of and we're going to keep reminding you what you need to be afraid of so fear is so normal to us we don't even we Pleasure is like something we're like training into right now. There's two amazing things you said. One was like this idea, when we simplified it, like I feel like even in our conversation, it was like, check in, like it was simple, like what's happening right now? <laughs> like, let's yeah. talk about this moment. Yes, or and it was as simple as a yes or a no. And if it, wasn't a, if it was a no, then you're like, great, you're here. Like, forget about what's happening outside of that. And you did it again brilliantly. This is idea that like, is a bear running at you. No, okay, great, you're fine. Like. It's so simple, <laughs> like, yeah, right? but, it, but it's something that my brain would never go. I don't think, I don't think anybody's brain really goes there right away. Right. Like, yeah. I feel like, we're, like we're so trained to be like lights, camera, action, theater. Like that's where your brain wants to go right fear. away. Fear. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then I think this thing you said about like fear is sort of normalized for us um, and passion and hedonism aren't, uh, but, and I, I know in, in my addiction journey, like, they both feel the same or they both used to feel the same, right? Mm -hmm. This endorphin rush fear gave me is the same endorphin rush that pleasure gave me, that hedonism gave me. And like, this is the place I want to go explore and have fun with. Yet I was scared of it because I'm like, it's the same feeling as when someone's holding a gun against me. <laughs> like, I'm, like, or I, my mom would never let me go jump out in the rain because it, like, because this may happen. And like separating those two and sort of saying, I, I guess I don't know for the audience or for even for me, like how do we distinguish that? Yeah. I mean, do we yeah, just mean yeah. like, here the bear is coming, here the bear is not coming, coming. That's ha -ha. right. right? Okay, so the bears are coming, take <laughs> right. action. If the bears are coming, what are you going to do? Take action, right? right. Uh, I love that story because I actually did, um, my husband and I, one of the only times we've ever had a real fight, we went outside and it's the only time I've seen a live bear and it came running at us. Well, I say running. He says it was walking, like leaping, but I, it's a freaking bear <laughs> and it came towards us. Yes. I've never seen one since. And so it's been like a really good check-in every time I think, oh, you're pissing me off. 
we're gonna go outside and argue because he's like we're not gonna <laughs> argue in front of our daughter i'm like okay we're gonna go outside and then i think do i really want to be confronted by a bear no it's not that important so i, I can <laughs> let go of a lot of things because i don't want that bear running at me anymore it was surreal it was like out of a freaking movie but that's what you get for living in like you know backwoods canada so you get bears, right? And uh, so how I would distinguish, when you were talking about that, like how do you distinguish between the pleasure experience and like that same adrenaline rush of pleasure as you would like comparing it to the adrenaline rush of fear because your adrenal glands are on fight or flight at the same time. And they're both, both of those systems are in your body to keep you alive, right? Sex is there to keep you alive. It's also to procreate, to keep the world going, right? It's all about, so there's an instinctive thing too, when people are thinking that their life is in danger, there's an almost like an automatic response to want to procreate. Um, you know, people will get into weird situations and they'll just like, oh my God, we're about to die. I mean, that's why everybody's like, COVID, we're about to die. Go have sex and make babies. Okay, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> so, we need to keep the world going, right? But uh, I think one way to distinguish is first to stop and ask. Right. The truth, is this something that I need to address right now? Is this, is this energy coming up first? First and foremost, and this is a tool of access consciousness, is this even my emotion? Because so many times we're actually so freaking aware of other people's stuff. Mm -hmm. We don't even realize that, you know, we're like SpongeBob's. When, when you think of us anatomically, uh, the way the, what we're composed of is all these energy, like energy molecules, right? And these energy molecules are, they all have a charge to them and these charges attract things. They also have charges about them that let off energy as well so those energy frequencies they travel and are the way that we're actually um, letting energy out of our bodies is kind of like a radio signal sending information to other bodies because we don't really have like a direct way of going i'm only going to send my signal over to that person we can you can train for it but a lot of times we kind of just have this seepage and spillage of emotion that comes out and people go, why, well, you know, why can you feel so-and-so? Well, because their energy does expand out of their body and you, you can't feel that it, it's like, um, I think there's actually been like measurements on this scientifically, like where you can, where you can, you know, they've seen how that occurs on bodies. Um, so if you can stop for long enough to go, truth is this even mine, what, if, what I'm experiencing is this, mine if it is yours and it's like whoa danger okay run take action right. but that difference with pleasure is what you can so what you do with pleasure is when you expand it it'll get even more exciting and then the energy will build and it'll become more orgasmic and your body will fill with orgasmic energy and when it's fear when you expand it and you fill it with air and you fill it more and more and more and more it actually dissipates to nothing because there's nothing that's actually there that's real Ooh. so if you just take a second to think mm -hmm. about that like with your body so take a fear that you have right. and if you take it and you just imagine it as like a little like a, a mo like these mo two molecules may be attracting to each other because it'll take the fear whatever you're afraid of and it'll attract this molecule and it'll compress these things and then we have issues right so our issue is like these compiled molecules of fear, like clumping together. And so if we take them all and you just start to take some deep breaths into them, and this is partly why deep breathing is really cool too, but you can visualize that these molecules start to spread. And, and what makes them really intense for us or fear that we can relate to them as fear is because we've clumped them together and we can identify them as something because all of a sudden it becomes almost solid. Okay. But as soon as we pull those molecules apart and then there's space between them and then there's so much space that there's nothing that's attracting them together you can't identify them there's just so much space it's like everything can move through them right so there's nothing sticking to you or sticking to it like whatever you're afraid of won't uh, affect you in the same way but you take that passion and you expand it it's actually more like a molecule that it's like it builds and it grows and it has your body receive more. So even, um, even with like excitement or like arousal, if you ask your body to receive more and receive more and receive more and just see what it does, just as an experiment, yeah. 
um, you'll notice that your fears that might have created um, addictive behaviors and your the things that turn you on, they'll they'll start to like pull apart and you'll almost see the polarity of how they are rather than the similarity of how they are because your body will do different things with them. Your body's not actually interested so much in fear. It's interested in survival, but it uses fear as a mechanism to survive. Right. It's so, like, as soon as you said that, I, I, <clears throat> I, I know in addiction, my body would, but like, I would think there were butterflies, but they weren't butterflies. There were these like dark clumps gathering together. And I confused yeah. them with like teenage butterfly love and being like, oh, but as soon as you said that, I was like, oh my God, I can a hundred percent tell if I sit there and breathe about it for a minute, I can tell when my body's like the clump, the clumps are like, boom, as opposed yeah. to expanding into butterflies and having experienced both of them. I love it. I love the different, I love that you like add that bit of differentiation right there. It's like, right. If you sit there and breathe about it, either it clumps in or it'll open and the butterflies expand out mm -hmm. and free out and, and build more of them while the clump is like just doing this in my body and I'm like like what what are you doing where are we going and for me yeah. in the past has been equal straight into like okay let's just go get high and it'll dissipate, dissipate. Well, that's our 41 <laughs> minutes <laughs> it always happens so quickly so um, fast, yeah yeah um but I think thank you for like I, I feel like this podcast is exactly what we needed to we talked about our pleasure we talked about uh sex we talked about how to make it fun yeah. uh consent and also I think as an addict, the differentiation between butterflies and clump and how to just breathe into that mm -hmm. um, is a great starting point. Uh, for people out there, you just have to go and check out Pleasure Zone. I will put a link in there somewhere. Thank you. There's so many great little tidbits. Even if you haven't been having sex for 40 years, like I thought I haven't, uh, <laughs> there's new things to learn. And there's new things to learn with another human being out there who, when you have that conversation, it changes up what you think you want to explore and have fun with. So uh, we'll put a link in somewhere. Awesome. This, this is YouTube stuff. I don't know about Look yet. here but... or here or here or here. <laughs> All right. Wait a second. If you can get one right on my like boob, that would be but awesome. I... <laughs> there. And then when people press it, I'll energetically feel like my nipple like... stimulated. It'd be so good. If, if we can you make that happen, <laughs> right? Shafiq, if you stand up and you can just get one like right on your, you know, oh like, you, and then like, people can go and press right. like right like on here. the tip of your penis, right? Just like right there, Pre yeah, <laughs> that would be perfect. And then every time they go to click on that, you're gonna feel that, right? Awesome. And then you get like a million clicks. You're like, why am I so stimulated today? What's happening? My God, from your lips to God's ears. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so to wrap this up, we're going to do uh, a rapid fire. I'll throw one word at you. You just respond back the first word that comes to your mouth. A first word that comes awesome. to your mind. Your mouth. And my mouth, too. Yeah. Pleasure. Oh, me. <laughs> Love. <laughs> oh, conflict, actually. Ooh, connections. Everywhere. Energy. Life. Freedom. Mm. Oh, there's, that's interesting. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Choice. Yes, more of it. Uh, light. It's more of an energy, not like a word. It's like, hmm. <laughs> mm. oh, ex expansion. Yeah, do more of it, be it. I mean, how, we can end on anything better than that. So. Uh, I'm going to thank everybody out there for taking time out of their busy schedules to tune in as I connected with the goddess of pleasure. Um, yeah, look, let's look forward to more of this and I'll see you bitches next week. Bye. Nice. Lucky bitches. <laughs> <laughs>